Now it's time for the final part in our Vows to Keep marriage series, Applying the Ten Commandments to Marriage. As David and Tracy Sellers take a look at the final three commandments, stop and apply these to your life. Whether you're newly married, needing to revive your lengthy marriage, or even if you're single, God truly gave us the Ten Commandments for our good. The, uh, the Eighth Commandment is um, basically saying we shouldn't steal. Now, within a marriage, it's not a common theme that, that stealing is a problem. But one thing I will say that we have... Maybe like the soap in the shower. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. I heard a story about a wife stealing her husband's toothbrush not long ago. <laughs> Ooh, I think I've been guilty of that. Um, <laughs> but, but one thing that can commonly happen is for couples that don't unite financially, this does become a problem. And it's, yeah. it's usually not that like I'm actually stealing money out of her purse, it's that you know, maybe the bills weren't distributed in a way that I agreed with. So our advice is to make sure that you are financially united because that safeguards you from being in a position where there would be that feeling that we haven't been fair. When everything we own is God's and it's all in the same bucket and we're using it for his glory, then that, that really becomes something that's a lot less of a threat in marriage. Yeah. The ninth commandment is thou shalt not lie. And I think we would all agree that lying is wrong, yet it can sneak its way into our marriage as well. We can lie to one another about little things. We can mm. even lie. No, I didn't buy that didn't yesterday. Buy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> or even the deceit that comes by not telling your spouse what actually yeah. happened, kind of covering it up. But I find I can even lie to myself about my spouse, or I can lie to others about David, and that is a misrepresentation of him. Like if we've just had a big fight and I go out to dinner with my friends, well, it's really easy to sort of blow that out of proportion and not actually speak the truth, which ends up not speaking the truth about God because I'm misrepresenting both David and God. Commandment number 10. That one is that you shouldn't covet. And um, we've all heard that phrase, keeping up with the Joneses. I, I think that it, it is something that as a couple is especially hard. Well, I think once you get married, you mm -hmm. almost realize it more so than, than maybe as a single person. I don't know, at least that was how it was for me. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not a new thing. I can still remember the first time that I saw a car and thought, oh wow, I would love to have that. And, and I literally spent years pursuing getting to that point ultimately to have the car be a total lemon that I was glad to get rid of <laughs> but um, we have those moments where we walk into a house and and we have like a realization this is nicer than what I have in marriage I think it's really easy to look at someone else's spouse and say wow do you see how calm she is like that guy has it so much better than I do or do you see how beautiful she is do you I mean wow all these things are kind of an assault on the fact that we need to be content in what God has given us. He's been very generous to us. There's other places and other ways those other people might not have it as good as you do, but of course that's not what we focus on. Ultimately, what this boils down to is we need to have a contentment with what God has given us and know that he's been very, very generous. I think it's important as we look at our marriages in view of the Ten Commandments, and especially the greatest commandment from Jesus, that we ask ourselves, does our life look like we are convinced that we do love the Lord with all that we have? That, that we are loving our neighbor in the best possible way that we can? And I think when we are able to, to answer that question with a yes, we will see some great success there. What if there are people at home who have listened to this and they recognize that they've broken some of these commandments and to get back to where God wants them to be in a unified union, it's just too tough or it's too much or it's too hard or, or they don't have hope that it's possible. Mm -hmm. How can they know that it's even worth trying? I feel like people sometimes think that God is asking them to cross all the T's and dot all the I's to follow the letter of the law to the letter. And that can be overwhelming. They can say, well, I've messed up on three, four, and five, so now, is it too late? Now what do I do? We got to go back to the cross because we live in the New Testament times now. We live where Jesus has come as our ultimate sacrifice. And he says, I look at the heart. God says that in the Old Testament, we see it in the New. I know and I test the heart. So God knows if you want to be on the right path or if you're just paying lip service. He knows your heart and he is the one that wants to unify your marriage back together. That's always his desire mm -hmm. is to bring you back to unity. So if you make the smallest step 
He's going to meet you the rest of the way. I promise. I've experienced it in my own life. Yeah, just starting from a place of repentance um, mm -hmm. and, and to do so first with the Lord and then to go to your spouse and to say, I am sorry for what I have done. Mm -hmm. I offended God and I see that that affected you. And I want to make that right. Boy, restoration is just around the corner from mm -hmm. that. Absolutely. Restoration is around the corner and it is available to you. And regardless of whatever situation you're in, it is available. It's also available for your spouse. If you look at your spouse and say, oh, he or she did this against me, it's done. It's over. You know what? God can restore things that appear in our world to be broken and shattered.